Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Macroverse. Today, we're going to talk about the most recent jobs report. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. You will, of course, get access to charts like the ones you'll see us talking about throughout this video. Let's go ahead and jump in. So there's actually a number of reports recently that I'd actually like to spend a little bit of time talking about. We have the we, we got the unemployment rate today, and it is just hanging on at around 3.8%. So not really a whole lot of change there. Uh, it is at least notable that it didn't move back down, but still sitting at around 3.8%, which in the context of history is still a relatively low level, all things considered, right? And we know, we track this, we track the jobs report, mainly because we know that if the labor market were to start to show weakness, then that could be sort of a a um, sort of a warning sign for a potential recession. At this point, the labor market has remained resilient, like it often does after inversion of the yield curve for some time. The hard part is, you know, sort of the waiting game between the the lag effects of all these interest rates and the QT, and then figuring out exactly how and 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 when it'll it'll actually hit the economy. But unemployment rate still at three point eight percent, still relatively relatively good number. We got a few other numbers that we should talk about as well. This is total non-farm private payroll employment. So you can see this is coming from the ADP, the Automatic Data Processing Research Institute. If you look at this chart, this one is getting a little concerning, right? A little concerning. I don't think it's necessarily anything just yet that you know you have to ring the alarm bells for, at least as the labor market goes, but if you zoom in, you can see that this has been increasing pretty steadily for a while. But some of these recent numbers are leaving something to be desired, I think, you know, in terms of in terms of wanting to see the economy do well. If you look at the monthly change, so we're gonna look at the month over month change, percentage change. And if we zoom into this period over here, you can see that this monthly print is the lowest monthly increase we've seen in a long time. In fact, you would have to go all the way back to, you know, several years ago, right? Several years ago, uh, back to, you know, early 2021, maybe late 2020, something like that to find numbers that are this low. So the percentage change month over month was only 0.069%. Quarterly, you can see it's also starting to fall down again, right? And then the year over year change looks something like this. Now, what's interesting, right, is when you, you know, when you look at this and you look at, you know, what we've historically seen, this is what happened during the pandemic, right? A pretty sharp drop off, pretty sharp drop off. Right now, the year over year percentage change is still sitting at around 2%, okay? But if this keeps trending this direction, right? Eventually it would go negative and therein lies the problem, right? You don't really want to see this completely flatten out because that is where bad things can happen in the stock market, right? So, and it's not to say that you don't want to see it. I mean, like a lot of us are perfectly prepared for a potential recession and to capitalize on it. But I mean, just as the economy goes, when the labor market, you know, when, when this starts printing or say going sideways or even going slightly down, you know, that that doesn't really lead to to great market conditions. Okay. Now we got another report that is somewhat conflicting with this one, and that is total non-farm employees. Okay. And this one is the and this one actually came in um, uh, today what you'll see is that it actually, we added 336,000 jobs and also some previous, uh, a previous month saw a, a you know, somewhat significant revision. This one is still coming in pretty strong. And if you were to look at the month over month percentage change and, and sort of just isolate this area over here, you can see that it hasn't, it hasn't really been that bad so far. Now, if you look at a year over year change, what you notice is that it is trending down, okay? And one of the things we said before is, you know, recessions don't tend to occur at the beginning of yield curve inversion. They tend to occur much later on. But 
If you look at prior recessions, which are the gray shaded regions, what you'll see is that in the financial crisis, the recession didn't start until the year over year percentage change of this metric was at 0.834. For the dot com crash, it didn't start until the year over year change was at 0.872. Okay, so that was what it was in the last two business cycles, not including the pandemic. And then if you were to go back to, we're not going to look at all of them, right? But if you were to go back to 1989, you can see that it started a little bit higher at 1.62% for the yearly change. That's ultimately when the recession started. Where is it right now? Right now, it's still at 2%. So it still isn't even below 2%. One of the reasons that it, you know it's just taking so long for a lot of this stuff to play out is look at how much excess there was. I mean, look at, at where we were when this whole process started. And you can see that there are there certainly are effects taking place, right? It's just going very slowly. For instance, the year-over-year -year percentage change of this metric in January 2022 was around 5%. In the summer of 2022, it was around, let's see, let's get a number here, it was around 4%, you know, maybe between 4 to 4.5%. Four if you were to go to January of 2023, it was down to 3.27%. And now look at the summer, 2.18%. And right now it's at 2.08%. So you can see as you as you sort of fast forward in time, sort of six months at a time, there is a noticeable change, right? And this is, the year-over-year -year percentage change is decreasing, but it's not negative, right? It's not negative yet. It doesn't mean that it won't go negative, but you can see that all these, you know, all these recessions that we're looking at on this screen here corresponded with this eventually going negative. Now, the recessions may have started before it went negative, but they all eventually made it into that territory. And so that's why this is an interesting metric to look at because it, it has been weakening a little bit, right? It's been going up, but it's not been going up as quickly as it used to. So, you know, the total number is still higher, but it's not increasing at the pace that it once was. And and you can kind of see that it's it's slowly, very, very, very gradually um, sort of potentially topping out, right? And again, it, it depends on how far the Fed goes and how, how long they hold rates at high levels. But you can kind of see it, that, that process in motion, especially if you look at things like year-over-year -year percentage changes or even a quarter-over-quarter -quarter percentage change. I mean, like, if you look at it quarter-over-quarter, -quarter, you can see that once upon a time, this was all the way up at like 1.46%. Now it's down to 0.512%. So it's dropped a lot. And even here, you know, a lot of these prior recessions corresponded to this thing, you know, this quarter quarterly change going negative. Okay, and it hasn't even gone negative yet. And sometimes you can see there was periods where it went negative and it still didn't mean that that was corresponding to a recession. So just something to think about. I also want to talk a little bit about the unemployment rate, but alternative measures of the unemployment rate. And, and you know, if you look at U3, this is the standard unemployment rate. Again, that stayed unchanged at 3.8%. If you look at U1, which is greater than 15 weeks um, uh, for unemployed, that also stayed constant at 1.4%, right? And you can see that that one actually started to move up in recent months. But on this, this recent jobs report, it actually held fairly constant. Okay, so not a whole lot of changes there. We can also look at a few other things. So I want to look at job openings because if you look at job openings, we actually got, a, we saw a pretty big beat in, in this most recent print, right? So the, the amount of job openings came in well above expectations and 690,000 above what it was last month, or at least whatever the numbers, if they were revised, whatever those numbers were, that's how many more job openings that were added. So of course the, the the market reacted to this, but I think the thing to consider, and let me just hide the S and P here because it's not really that important for this. The thing to consider is that this is not the first time this has happened, right? Like look at the chart, right? Just look at at this. It's a stochastic process, right? The rate hikes they are having an effect theoretically, right? QT is theoretically having an effect. It's just taking a long time, and you know back in April of 2023 we had a pretty large increase. If you were to look at the month over month percentage change, right, we've seen prints pretty high before, right? April was up 5.9%. September 2022 was up 6.43%. This one was up 7.74%. So there are occasional prints up in this region. The issue is that we then usually get three or four prints, or, or say two to three prints 
in a row that are negative following that print, right? So again, looking at it like this, you can see what I mean, right? Like there are occasionally periods where it goes up a lot, but then it, it then just spends several months decreasing again, right? Like in December of 2022 and in April of 2023, and maybe again in August of 2023 could end up marking some type of a local top before continuing the downtrend on, on job openings. And I mean, we can break this down by category and we often do that, but you're not going to see, I mean, a lot of it is from government jobs as well. Um, like government jobs, you can see they added a lot from 962,000 up to 1.05 million. State and local also went up a, a little bit. Manufacturing jobs or manufacturing job openings got a bit of a bounce here in this recent month. And you know, maybe it, this was going from July to August. If you were to go back to um, last year, there wasn't the same bounce, right? I was just sort of looking to see if there was. August was a bounce. Last year, August was not a bounce on, on job openings. But again, I mean, like we had a bounce here in October to November. And, and so it, it just remains to be seen whether it's a bounce that is to be sustained or whether it will eventually just roll back over and continue going down. And I mean, we could go through the whole list, um, but let's just keep it to just a few of them. Here is professional and business services. That one caught my eye just because of how much it increased. Uh, so you can see it, it or it's catching my eyes, 1.43 million to 1.94 million. So I'm not even sure if I, I looked at this one yet, but I mean, that's a pretty substantial move. I feel like there was one that caught my eye that actually went down. I don't know which one. I can't remember which one it was. Durable goods, it looks like, slightly went up. Um, I don't know if it was construction or not. Construction went slightly down. So that was the one that caught my eye earlier is the construction job openings dropped a little bit from 353,000 to 350,000. Not a huge drop, but it's one of the few categories that actually did see a drop in, a drop in job openings on this recent report. I think it's also worthwhile to just sort of touch base on things like initial claims and continued claims. We get that data weekly. I'm not going to make a video on initial claims every single week uh, just because it's really not that interesting. I mean, you can just go look at the numbers. But this is what the trend has been for a long time. And it's been a lot of chop. And, you know, the thing that I've, I've, I've been looking at is, is last year it bottomed out at the end of September. Right, the week of September 24th is when initial claims bottomed out last year at 182,000, and then we saw a higher low in January 2023 at 194,000. And then the question is: Is this just a higher low in September of 2023, near the end of September, at 202,000, and will it continue to trend up into sort of the end of the year and the first part of next year? That is something I'm I'm continuing to watch. But as I've said previously, right. You know, until these numbers start printing closer to 300,000 on a weekly basis, it's really difficult to call it a recession. It doesn't mean that it can't turn into one. And I, at some point, it, it very well could. It's just that, you know, when, when you're trying to figure out if, if the economy is in a recession or not, and you just look at the data, initial claims are, are incredibly low. And when you look at prior recessions, you can see that it corresponded to pretty large increases in initial claims, right, in, in prior recessions. We're not seeing that right now, right? Initial claims have, have been trending downward. I mean, yes, they've bounced the last couple of weeks, but it has been a downtrend since June. So when you look at it like that, it's kind of hard to make the case that the economy is in recession when initial claims are, are, are printing in the low 200,000s on a weekly basis. Again, the expectation would be that it would need to be printing in the 300,000s for it to really get into recession territory. You could have a correction by the S&P and it not mean recession, right? I mean, we we called for a correction in August and September by the S&P. We got that correction. It's about eight to 9% drop. It still doesn't mean it's a recession. It could likely turn into one, right? You know, as the months go on and, and, and more of the QT and the interest rates continue to filter through to the economy, but it's not really what we're looking at just yet, okay? And then we can also look at, at continued claims, see what's going on there. And, you know, it got a pretty big bounce here in September of 2022. That's sort of where it found these lows. And then the question is, is it doing that again, right? Did it just simply bounce again here in September or is it just going to continue to slowly go down? So these are things that I, I think we have to watch. But again, when you look at the context of history, 
recessions correspond to continued claims going up quite quickly. And while they did go up pretty quickly at the end of 2022, they've basically been coming down ever since, you know, April or so. Like if we actually get the top here, it occurred April 15th, or April 8th, April 8th. So it's been trending down ever since then. So then this is another one that we should look at because this could lead into a recession, but it, it hasn't necessarily hit that recession territory just yet, especially when you compare it to these prior recessions over here that saw much larger increases to continued claims, right? And, you know, you could look at, as say, like a year-over-year -year percentage change of it and kind of see that, you know, when it's up in this region, that corresponded to recessions. And we are sort of at, at pretty high levels. But remember, we were coming from pretty... Um, you know, the, the levels that we were coming at, coming from were were much different than they normally are, especially, I mean, just sort of considering, um, you know, just considering how how everything that happened with the pandemic sort of just changed a lot of stuff. And I mean, it, it affected a lot of the data and, and trends that we look at because you're kind of comparing, you know, changes and to, to these major peaks that, that don't really often occur. Um, but that is, is something that I, I, I thought was at least worthwhile to explore a little bit was was continued claims. So the other, I believe there, there were a few other things that I wanted to talk about when it came to, to the labor market. We could look at, at other stuff like unemployment level by reason for unemployment. So this one here is job losers. That one hasn't really started to go up in a material way just yet. We can look at job losers on temporary layoff. Still nothing substantial. Job losers not on temporary layoff. Again, it's moving up a little bit, but nothing like these large increases we've seen over there. Permanent job losers. It's gone up some, but again, the slope is not what you would expect it to, to be in order for it to mean like recession now. And there's other categories that you can look at. Here's re-entrance to the labor force. So this one is starting to go up and you know, maybe it's starting to go up because, you know, because people uh, need to get a job. Maybe they need to pay their student loans or maybe they're running out of money that they saved up back a couple of years ago. So this one has started to go up a little bit recently. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. There was another one that I wanted to look at. I was, I was looking at it earlier. Uh, here, this total temporary help, so help, help services employees. This one is showing a lot of weakness, right? So like look at this chart compared to prior recessions and it is trending down. Right. And again, like looking at a year over year percentage change, this is kind of that recessionary territory. So in some sectors, it certainly seems like it's getting into recessionary territory, while in other sectors, it, it doesn't necessarily seem like that just yet. But, you know, that's essentially what we're looking at with the labor market. And, and we could peel back the layers even more. Um, but you get the idea. There's there's other measures on here that we look at. We, we can also look at the job quits rate. That's been going down, which makes sense, right? As, as, as economic times get harder, people are less likely to quit their job, okay? Um, if, if you're flush with cash and, you know, you're making a lot of money with investments or with whatever, then you, you're, you might be more likely to quit your job or, you know, to go do something else. Or maybe you think you can just go find a new job because there's so many, there's so much demand. But as economic times become more difficult, the expectation is that fewer and fewer people would actually quit their job just because they're not as sure that they'll go, they'll be able to go out and find another job. And again, here, if you look at the year-over-year -year, uh, change, you can see that this one is also in recessionary territory based on, on what we've seen in history, but we haven't seen a recession just yet. So a lot of different ways you can measure the labor market and, and sort of dissect it, but that is what I want to talk about today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Make sure you subscribe if you're, if you're not subscribed and give the video a thumbs up. Uh, I probably don't ask that enough, but do give the video a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.